There is a pretty obvious parallel between the strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and the dynamic between Yugi Moto and the Pharaoh, with a softer, good-hearted person and a malevolent persona. There is a little bit of a twist, as Yugi and the Pharaoh are separate entities compared to Hyde being an exaggerated manifestation of Jekyll's shadow, in the Jungian sense. As a result, Yugi and the Pharaoh can have actual interactions, which makes for good interplay and character development moments. If Hyde is Jekyll's shadow, what does that say about Yami Yugi? For starters, Yami Yugi literally translates to Dark Yugi, and if you look close at the dark attribute, it has the same kanji. But I am going to probe a bit further and look at how Yami Yugi represents a certain cluster of negative character traits. Now, I am not endorsing armchair psychology, so do not use this video as a framework for diagnosis for yourself or others. But when it comes to fictional characters, there are no real-world consequences to pointing out the darker side of humanity. In fact, I would say that this characterization is a fantastic indication of the caliber of Kazuki Takahashi's writing. So let's start looking at the dark triad. I'm going to start with psychopathy, which is a rather contentious term as it is often conflated with sociopathy, and although common in everyday vernacular, is not used in the clinical setting. Instead, antisocial personality disorder is used for actual diagnostics. But for the sake of the video, psychopathy will be defined by impaired empathy and remorse, inclination for violence, and importantly, egotism and impulsivity. Frequently in the manga, the pharaoh engages in penalty games with disproportionate and ironic punishments. This was toned down in the anime, but there is still the Berserker's Soul segment in which Weevil, or Haga, is excessively punished. Or this scene where Merrick's being tormented. The lack of empathy is evident, but I also want to point out that the Pharaoh entering games with ridiculous stakes is both impulsive and egotistical, quite fitting for the king of games. There is some overlap between psychopathy and grandiose narcissism in areas like high self-esteem and large ego. Being royalty, it isn't hard to see where some self-centered behavior springs from, with an entire arc dedicated to searching for his own name. On top of that, there's the specific duel with Raphael. Since Rebecca's grandfather had been freed, and the duel was not a shadow game, there were no stakes. Yet the pharaoh plays the seal of Orichalcos and ends up losing Yugi's soul because he did not want to lose the game. This obsession of winning at any cost is more pronounced in the third trait, Machiavellianism. Named after Niccolo Machiavelli, this trait is centered around manipulativeness, callousness, and disregard for morality. Outside of using the Millennium Puzzle for destiny draws, the pharaoh cheats. A lot. Like this time, where his opponent follows the rules of the game. Roll to six but Yugi still wins with the broken die. And also, on the subject of chance, Time Wizard is probably the most devious example of this trait. Joey has a luck-based deck, and one of the strongest cards in it is Time Wizard, which can destroy every monster on the opponent's side of the field with a little luck. This card was given to Joey by Yugi, and when used against the Pharaoh's Dark Magician, the successful Time Wizard does not wipe the board, but instead causes Dark Magician to turn into Dark Sage, which nets the Pharaoh Tempo and a free spell card. This scheme is insidious as it subverts the value of Time Wizard and sacrifices the relationship between Yugi and Joey just to win the duel. As a quick note, Machiavellianism sounds similar to psychopathy, but the key difference is that Machiavellian schemes are planned out, while sociopathic actions are impulsive. That concludes coverage of the Dark Triad, but some psychologists are instead adopting the tetrad model, adding sadism as the fourth trait, sadism being deriving pleasure from others' pain or discomfort. Sadists often exhibit cruel, violent, and or manipulative behavior, and as a result, there is a degree of overlap with both psychopathy and Machiavellianism. And I think the aforementioned penalty games, especially the one against Arcana and the one with the lighter, show Pharaoh as being sated, by the pain of others. 
I think this cluster of dark traits really adds a lot to the complexity of the pharaoh, especially when compared to his foil, Yugimoto. I mentioned earlier not to use this as a diagnostic video, but I bet there are members of the audience prone to hypochondriasis who are thinking that these traits feel eerily apt. And, and that is because these traits are seemingly ubiquitous, if not universal. Craving instant gratification, self-obsession, deceiving for personal gain, and the everyday vicarious sadism of America's Funniest Home Videos, for example. These traits lie on a spectrum, where at the clinical level there are personality disorders like antisocial personality disorder and narcissistic personality disorder. These personality disorders are based on the patient being significantly impaired in self and interpersonal functioning. It is interesting to note that there is not a clinical analog to Machiavellianism, which is good because this trait tends to crop up in people who enjoy card games, considering the planning, the mind games, and the meticulous attention to detail to eke out any small advantage. Machiavellianism in itself is not a bad thing, and a degree of narcissism is necessary to be self-reflective, to grow, and to change. Just remember to be empathetic and to remain grounded in a strong moral foundation, because each of us casts a shadow.